This tutorial is all about energy changes in chemical reactions and specifically the meaning of the terms exothermic and endothermic. At a higher level we also need to know a little bit more than this. Specifically why some reactions are exothermic and why others are endothermic related to the energy changes that occur during bond breaking and bond making. So in simple terms exothermic reactions give out energy usually in the form of heat and exothermic reactions uh, transfer that energy into the surroundings. This usually means that the temperature rises. Endothermic reactions are the opposite. These take in energy from their surroundings. In other words, they absorb energy from their surroundings, which usually means that the temperature drops. Chemical reactions involve breaking bonds and making bonds. Making new bonds releases energy and is exothermic, whereas breaking bonds requires energy and is endothermic. A chemical reaction is exothermic if the energy released making the new bonds is greater than the energy required to break the existing ones. A chemical reaction is endothermic if the energy released making new bonds is not as high as the energy required to break the existing bonds. Now in order to explain this fully I'm going to veer onto a bit of AS level chemistry. Uh, it's not something you'll need to know but hopefully it'll help you to understand this idea of breaking and making bonds a little bit better. So when you look at the chemical reaction uh, between say methane and oxygen to make carbon dioxide and water vapour you can draw out each of the molecules as displayed formulas and see that in order for the methane to uh, react with the oxygen and make carbon dioxide and water vapour, you need to break bonds. You need to break these four carbon-hydrogen bonds and these two oxygen-oxygen double bonds. And you also need to make bonds. You need to make these carbon-oxygen double bonds and these oxygen-hydrogen single bonds. The energy needed to break a carbon-hydrogen bond is 413 kilojoules. Uh, indeed, in order to make one, that would give out 413 kilojoules, but that's another story. So breaking four carbon-hydrogen bonds here would involve four times 413, which is 1652 kilojoules. And to break these two oxygen-oxygen bonds, well, each one is 498 kilojoules, so two of them are 996 kilojoules. And because we're bond-breaking, that would be endothermic energy required. But of course we also make new bonds and making the two carbon oxygen bonds would make two lots of 805 kilojoules or 1610 kilojoules and making these four oxygen hydrogen bonds would uh, give out four times 464 or 16, sorry, 1856 kilojoules. Now that energy would be given out whether the reaction is overall exothermic or endothermic depends on the relative size of the amount of energy given out and the amount of energy taken in. Adding up these figures together, what we get is that the energy required is 2,648 kilojoules, but the energy given out or released is 3,466, and that's more. So overall, this reaction is exothermic to the tune of 818 kilojoules. And that's because the energy which is given out in making new bonds is greater than the energy required to break the existing bonds. We can show this on an energy level diagram. Uh, the reactants have got a certain amount of energy uh, locked up in their bonds and the products have got a certain amount of energy locked up in their bonds. In order for the reaction to take place, this red curve, we need to put energy in to break the bonds, which existing in the first place, to 6, 4, 8 kilojoules. But then, once we've broken them all up and made them into individual atoms, energy is released in making the new bonds, 3, 4, 6, 6. And the difference here, 818 kilojoules. Now, because that is given out, it's an overall exothermic reaction. And incidentally, um, this hump here, this energy hump, is the activation energy for the reaction. And that's the energy required for a successful collision, which we looked at when we looked at uh, rates of reaction earlier on in C3. 
Here's a past exam question then. Bond making is exothermic process. Exothermic reactions transfer energy to the surroundings as heat. Burning of fuels is exothermic. Explain why using ideas about bond breaking and bond making. Now if it's exothermic, I'm going to say it is exothermic because the energy released in making new bonds is greater than the energy required to break the existing bonds. And here's a second question. Fuel B is ethanol. Don't worry about the earlier part of the question. Look at this equation. It shows the complete combustion of ethanol. The reaction's exothermic. Look at this list of sentences. One sentence is a correct explanation for an exothermic reaction. Which one? Uh, more energy is given out during bond breaking than is taken in during bond making. Well, that's wrong because energy is given out during bond making. Let's have a look at the second one. More energy is given out during bond making than is taken in during bond breaking. That sounds correct. Going to give that a tick. Just check the other two. More bonds are broken than are made. Well, uh, that's probably not the case anyway, and it's irrelevant because different bonds have got different energy. And finally, more energy is taken in during bond breaking than is given out during bond making. No, that would be the reverse. So the answer is that more energy is given out during bond making than is taken in during bond breaking.